Hello! Guys, welcome in. Settle down. Take a seat. It's Wolf Den Podcast time. How are you doing? Will. Hello. Hi. How's it going? I forgot to turn off my little uh, dehumidifier here. All right. Well, we got to start the whole show over again let's now, just don't do, we? Let's just do the whole thing again. <laughs> okay. Hello. Welcome, hey. guys. It's Hello. Wolf Den Podcast time. That's right. <laughs> Guys, my well, my my I had a sore throat yesterday. My voice is oh no, my voice is not here. Oh man, everyone everyone's getting sick. My wife's not feeling well. Uh, my kids aren't feeling well. I'm like a last man standing right here. You know, try not to get anything. You, you know, you know don't, what it don't, is. Don't let me see you for like a month. <laughs> you, you know, you know what? I I know exactly why I'm sick. It's because I why stayed over our parents' house. Mm. Absolutely refused to turn the heat on. It's fucking freezing over there. Yeah, and that's all. Oh. Yeah, you you heard dad. No, no turning on the heat until November. Which yeah, what yeah, what you, the fuck? I don't know. Something <laughs> happens when you become a dad. Like you don't want to turn it on. Is that you? November. Are you like that? I guess I am now. <laughs> Do you not have the heat on? It's no. freezing. It's it's not. Oh, our house is like shockingly humid. So okay, all right, yeah. I still have my air conditioners in. <laughs> well, which is I another mean, problem. I live in an apartment and yeah. uh, I don't pay for electricity for some reason. So, oh, I, just, that's I nice. do whatever I want. I do. Check your privilege. <laughs> anyway, uh, hi, guys. Hello, Marimba hey. Pirate with 39 months. Hello, Irv with the 16 months. If Bob hates E3, we all hate E3. Thanks. I appreciate the support. <laughs> and uh, LJWVU, thank you for the subscription. Uh, anyway, uh, we have a lot to talk about today. The main topic of the day is that E3 is back, and yes. uh, there's a- surprisingly a lot to talk about there. Yeah, and uh, I love complaining. In case you haven't <laughs> noticed, so and there's nothing he loves complaining about more than the Electronic Entertainment Expo. I figured there wasn't enough drama going on in in the industry right now, and I needed to just have my own. So I yeah. felt a little left out from all the drama that everybody else is having, yeah. and I needed to create my own drama. So that's what that's going to be. Right. Well, uh, you also- don't have a wife to cheat on. You're not, right. you know, into NFTs or you know, gambling scams. So right. I mean, if this is this is what you have, do you, man? Right. Exactly. Not like you can uh, get canceled for it. Uh, video game donkey also uh, made a publishing company, and yes. uh, everybody's pissed for some reason. <laughs> I was gonna ask you to f- find other people who have publishing co- other YouTubers who have other publishing YouTubers. Uh, f- I I I I know of. Uh, we'll talk about it when we get to it. But Gerard okay. and the Game Grumps. Um. Anyway, Splinter Cell reboot being made for for modern audiences. Hold and, on a second. I have to say good night to my daughter. All right, you say good night while I keep recapping. Uh, the Grand Theft Auto guy that we talked about last week who leaked a bunch of stuff. Uh, he's, he's been found and it's not looking good for that man. Uh, man, I should say boy. Uh, and that's pretty much it for, for this week. We got a lot of, well, there's a lot of other little things, but that's the, that's the main stuff. Right. She says hi, by the way. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, Bob with no coffee is enough drama as it is. I have coffee right here. I went to Walgreens right before this. Got one of those canned latte situations. Uh, anyway, uh, let's talk. Let's 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 dive right into the E three stuff. Let's. So we have E three dates for twenty twenty three. It's going to be in person. Yes, after a three year hiatus from live events that included one digital event in twenty twenty one, the Electronic Entertainment Expo will return to the Los Angeles Convention Center for E3 2023, June 13th to the 16th, and it will feature separate areas and days for industry and consumer events. E3 business days are scheduled for June 13th to the 15th and will be limited to registered industry members for networking, meeting, and more. Media will also be allowed to go hands-on with upcoming games in dedicated industry-only spaces, including one half of the convention center. Uh, Gamer Days, 
the portion of the event open to the public will run the 15th and the 16th in the other half of the convention center, separate from the industry area. This will allow players to go hands-on with the same upcoming games, as well as connect with developers, content creators, and more. This area will also be open to industry members during their designated days. The press release announcing the new structure also confirmed that partner digital events and showcases will precede the show starting June 11th. In prior years, Microsoft, Ubisoft, and more held live event, live press conferences in theaters around LA, while Nintendo presented a special E3-themed Nintendo Direct just before opening the show floor. GameIndustry.biz gave more information about the new E3, including an expansion to the official E3 mobile app. Before the app only listed E3 specific events inside the convention center, but now any E3 partner who is presenting will be featured, including those showing off showing games off site. E3 2023 will be the first in person E3 event since 2019. It will be the first under Reed Pop, who also organizes events like PAX, New York Comic Con, Star Wars Celebration, and still hasn't gotten back to me as to where my Thursday pass is for next week's New York Comic Con. In, 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 uh, in spoiler alert, in case, we got case you want to know. we have some of you already know that we hate E three for for yeah. very reasonable reasons that happened to us in the past. We got reasons to hate Reed Pop for New York oh, Comic yeah. Con that hasn't oh, even yeah. happened yet, <laughs> and we'll get into that. Yeah. Oh, that's it. That's the article, right? That's it. That's just, this article, is one of those yeah. articles that just that just goes right on to the next article. Um, yeah. So. I like the idea of E3 yeah. uh, being separated into uh, industry and public. Not because I, it, I always get in trouble when I talk about this because people think that I, I'm like, uh, I'm like segregating <laughs> us from the from the 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 peasants who don't belong the, the, at the, the industry event. The unwashed masses. Yeah, that's not it at all. I just it's it's just not set up to be a public event. I like PAX, which is which is from Reed Pop. I've never had a problem with PAX even though it's made by this by Reed Pop and I've had problems with like we're going to talk about their issues with yeah. Comic-Con. But uh PAX is great, and that's a public-facing event, and I love that. I'd much rather it be set up like that, because that's set up to be a public-facing event. Uh, E3 is not set up for that at all. It's set up to be an industry thing. So when people go to to observe it as the public, they have a horrible time. Lines are like three hours long to play anything. Uh, sometimes you can't get involved with any of the stuff you see. It's hard to get in. You're limited with the stuff you can bring, the equipment that you yeah. have. That the, there's, there's the security is insane. Uh, the hours that you get to actually walk the show floor are really minimal for the public and stuff. So they did a absolutely horrible job organizing it for the public when they opened it to the public uh mm -hmm. that's part of why i hate e3 so the idea of getting read pop involved and them saying there's going to be business days and there's going to be public days that makes a lot more sense now what's this about there being industry only spaces yeah so uh let me just pull up the article i don't, I don't know, know how so i feel about that because it yeah it's set, go go ahead well they're going to divide the convention center into two sections uh, one section is going to be uh, industry only, and the other section is going to be uh, for the public. They're going to have the same things, basically, but it sounds like the industry only area is so that basically the industry and like the media can do their job. <laughs> yeah, they can go, they can see the games, they can talk to developers, and they can like write their stories and publish their articles or make their videos and whatnot. Whereas the public uh, section will basically be like any other uh, video game convention where anyone can go check out the games of uh, buy shit, talk to developers who want to uh, showcase their games there and things like that. That the public side sounds like a more traditional convention. Whereas uh, the business section, the industry section sounds exactly like what E3 used to be. Back in the 90s, the place mm -hmm. where the news outlets go to write and find out about all the upcoming games. 
So what does this mean? Does this mean that uh, people who uh, are exhibiting, does this mean they have to have two spaces? Uh, I guess. Because that kind of sucks. Yeah. Unless, uh, the- you know, unless, unless they, you know, there's a deal involved where, you know, you like Nintendo always has like a big booth on the show floor. Right. Maybe they don't get as big of a booth in the public side. Like maybe they just have like, you know, 10 square feet as opposed so, to like 2000. I'm not sure if you got to experience this when you went to E3, but um, there was normally two. It's like it's split into two that there's there's uh, the there's two convention halls, basically. And they're both like just as yeah. big as, as each other. And you have to walk through like a hallway to get to the two. And they're pretty far apart. Yeah. Um, in between those two, though, when you walk down that when you walk down that hallway, there's like a little uh I want to say it looks like a bunch of cubicles. You go into a room yeah. and there's like there's a sea rooms. of cubicles. Yeah. 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 That's we, we the saw, media area. We saw uh, Moss there one time. Yeah. yeah. So that is more like the uh, the industry area. That That's where like yeah. the meetings happen and stuff. That makes a little bit of sense. Also, there's like, you know, like the media room where you can like go and like work on the video and stuff. Like you, you can like set mm-hmm. up like a laptop and stuff and work. Um, that makes sense, but having, it sounds like they're going to split the convention center, one industry, one, uh, public. And that seems a little weird. I'm not sure how, how that's going to work out. I don't, I know Gamescom in Germany operates very similarly. Like they have the first few days are for the industry and media only. And then the last few days they open it to the public. I don't know. I don't think they divide that convention center in two. Right. Um, but I would imagine that, you know, giving the industry and media their own days, like allows, allows them to accommodate the industry and the media better than having to also accommodate everybody. So yeah, I, I mean, maybe splitting it into media and public sections this way they can, you know, accommodate the media better by giving them all the accommodations that they would need like desks and quiet spaces and you know good wi-fi or internet connection right so whereas you know the public doesn't need that really so so, so the so. way pax works is it's mm-hmm. just all public facing and they, they have demos for the public to wait in line and play and whatever and then most of the this is up to the 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 exhibitor but most of them will have a separate like uh, a game station that says like media only, and that's where your appointment is. Is at one of those. Uh, if you want it behind closed doors, then then the exhibitor either needs to have like a little cubicle set up, or a lot of them will do it at a hotel. Well, right. I've only had to do that like three times, maybe. Um, but that it seems like. It could, it should be set up more like, uh, well, I guess, I guess it can because I guess there's less media going to PAX than there is going to E3. So, right. uh, E3 will need a lot more space for, for media people, but it still seems weird to have it completely separated like that because I'm assuming a lot of public is going to buy tickets for this thing, expecting to get an experience that they see on you know social media from all these news outlets and 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 from like g4 and stuff right. and they're gonna get there and they're gonna get a half-assed version because they don't have access to the media side which is gonna be really unfortunate i mean i've you know if i've if we could say one nice thing about read pop it's that the actual convention that they put together is usually very fun and exciting and organized so, <laughs> and organized yes I, once you're actually in the convention, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, they know how to put together a good fan convention. You know, like we said, Comic-Con, PAX, Star Wars Celebration, C2E2, a uh, hundred others I'm forgetting. So I'm sure they can find a way to make it, you know, appealing to just about anyone who wants to go. It'll be different from the media side of things the media side of things if, if we're being honest that's probably going to be boring as hell because it's <laughs> you're just going to walk up you're going to play the game you're going to talk to the developer and you're going to write your little article about it and then be then go on the, you know it, the the fan side will have all the exciting stuff 
I mean, I'm I we're a little jaded by that because you know you yes. do it like you do it like twenty times in one day. You mm-hmm. go up, you talk to the developer, you play the game, they tell you about their game, and you do that like twenty times, and fifteen of those are boring bad games. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like it starts to warp your perception. But when you're seeing it on, you know, YouTube and 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 back in the day, you see it on TV and stuff. You want to go. You're like, that looks awesome because you're only yeah. seeing the cool stuff, you know. So you're like, I want to be a part of that. So it is like, it gets in people's heads. It becomes this prestigious thing. Uh, but the public facing side probably won't be too much like that. But there is, there is some mystique to like walking into a convention center, seeing all of this like marketing for unreleased games and stuff and being yeah. able to oh, wait definitely. online to play those games. Unfortunately, the lines are going to be fucking huge. Um, yeah. I wish more people did like what Nintendo does with like the warp pipe pass. You like make an appointment yeah. and you show up. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm not going to this. Uh, I go to a lot of conventions. I'm not going to this because uh, they doxed me back in 2019. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they just fucking had everybody's address and phone number just on their website for everybody to see. Uh, and then somebody found it and and went loose with it. Uh. One of the websites that it ended up on was a website called Kiwi Farms, uh, which is some just dregs of the internet New Zealand website that like had all these protections of free speech against it and whatever. And that website mm-hmm. became used as like a just like a harassment site to harass all different types of people. So people would go on that website and just look for names and addresses and just fuck with everybody on the list. Um, and it stayed on that site for a really long time. Uh, until... Just about a few weeks ago. <laughs> um, good news, everybody. Kiwi Farms, the harassment website, uh, is no longer a site anymore. I'm going to read this second article first, I think. Uh, anyway, the the head of Kiwi Farms, the internet forum best known for organ- organized harassment campaigns against trans and non-binary people, and Bob Wolf <laughs> said that <laughs> the site experienced a breach that allowed hackers to access his administrator account and possibly the accounts of all other users. Wait, this isn't like what happened though. Like this happened, but like also, right. also more importantly, the uh, the hosting site that hosted it was just like, nah, it's too much heat. You're you're done, <laughs> and, and they and they shut the whole thing down. So yeah, they might have been hacked, but also the here we go. The compromise came after content delivery network Cloudfire last week stopped serving Kiwi Farms after weeks of stiff rebuke from critics who said Cloudfire was enabling mass harassment and doxing activities that were targeting trans and non-binary individuals and Bob Wolf. Cloudfire provided protection from dis- distributed denial of service attacks that have targeted Kiwi Farms for years. Cloudfire had been the last top tier provider to continue serving the site. Once it severed ties, Kiwi Farms was forced to fall back on much less com- com- capable, capable services. Uh, I also think it's just off the internet completely now. In fairness of Joshua the admin, he appears to know technically what he's doing based on his comments in Telegram chat. Independent researcher Kevin Beaumont. Uh, wrote on Twitter in a thread documenting the breach. Unfortunately for him, all the companies he's working with and the users don't. Uh, Crocodile Tears. Kiwi Farms launched in its current form in 2013 and quickly became a hub for online harassment campaigns. At least three suicides have been tied to harassment stemming from Kiwi Farms community. For forum participants often openly admit their goal is to drive their targets to take their own lives. Trans and non-binary people, members of the LGBT community, and women are frequent targets. And Bob Wolf. And Bob Wolf. (laughs) Moon didn't respond to an email seeking comment and additional uh, details about the breach. On Sunday, he attempted to cast himself as the victim with no indication of irony as he explained the work that would be required to get the site running again. Uh, Xeno 4 removed us from their license a year ago and their software is no longer sufficient for our needs he wrote we needed something custom but my confidence in my work has been shot the sophistication in this attack is very high and shows an, a, an intimate familiarity with both Rust and Zen 4 it is unfortunate that they have applied themselves to this end likely for pay 
there are so many people trying to destroy then create. Uh, this person is the person who, like, uh, ran, like, the campaign against Kiwi Farms. And good for them, because they di actually did something that took down the stupid website. Yeah. Uh, Clara Sorrenti, uh, trans activist and Twitch streamer. Uh... Uh, Sorrenti is a trans activist and Twitch streamer who provides political commentary under the handle Keffels uh, earlier that morning. An impersonator had sent an email to city councilors claiming that Sorrenti had killed her mother and would soon go to City Hall to shoot every cisgender person she saw. See? This is the type of shit these people have to deal with. Yeah. When I was woken up by police officers and saw the assault rifle pointed at me, I thought I was going to die. Sorrenti later recounted in a video on YouTube. I feel traumatized. So anyway, uh, obviously, uh, we didn't get this sort of harassment. All I got no. was some death threats sent to my phone, some, some, some pictures of mangled limbs, and pizzas sent to my house. But uh, obviously... Other people got it much worse, and it's mostly because of that stupid website. Key. Well, it's a little trickle down effect. It was stupid ass E three being stupid, and then it was uh, Kiwi Farms for hosting all of that stuff. Um, and uh, even before they doxed us, we had a terrible time at E three for yeah a bunch of other reasons, like the like the always changing security like situation like one day we're allowed to have bags one day we're not allowed to have bags for no with no yeah. warning will was allowed to have his camera i wasn't allowed to have my <laughs> camera even though it was like way smaller um and we're there to cover the event it's, it's yeah fucking just just constant inconsistent nightmare. rules uh unfair treatment of everyone uh depending on what your badge said about you um really bad communication trying to get any information on anything you want to see it was it was just a very very unfriendly experience and i and i would not have yes it was open to the public but i would have told everybody to just steer clear of it with their with their life it was not worth going to yeah i also did uh, if you're especially public facing like the public yeah had it was a, a lot of restrictions uh, against the public so it really yeah. well, i don't think would have been worth it at. i would have been very disappointed if i went all the way to, i mean i was pretty disappointed for what we were doing but if i was purely going there to experience it as a member of the public i would have been pretty disappointed uh willow says they talked about him a decent amount on kiwi farms i'd like to know what happened yeah uh, give me a brief um, but anyway, uh, I want to continue this hate train on E3, uh, and talk about Comic-Con that is next week, which is put on by the yeah. same, pe the people read pop yeah. who do PAX Comic-Con and are swooping in to help save E3 had a little bit of a shit show with Comic-Con that's going on next week. Yes. Um, so so, all right, I'll tell you my little uh, issues that happen. Uh, tried to get a media pass. They denied me. I was like, whatever, not a big deal. I don't need to fucking go. It's not a problem. I I, I understand. Um, but then they're like, apply for a pro badge. And then you can go on Thursday. And that's it. And I was like, all right, all I want to do is go on Thursday. That's fine. So I applied for that. And then I got it. Um, and then they want $12 for shipping. Yeah, whatever. you have to pay for your shipping. Take $12, whatever. You're giving me a free badge. Not a big deal. Um, then they announced that uh, the Mario movie will be shown at a panel at Comic-Con on that Thursday. And I was like, yo, that's the day I'm going. I got to see the Mario trailer. That sounds awesome to be in the crowd for that. I'm not waiting on a huge ass line, though. You can forget that. If I originally was like, I'm not going to even bother because I know the line's going to be huge. I'm not getting there at nine in the morning for a four o'clock panel. I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, some people will go super early and wait through all of the other panels just to submit their, just, just to have their spot. Um, yeah. I'm not doing all that. But I got an email and they said, hey, anybody who's going to Comic-Con, you can reserve a spot at the panel. And I was like, yo. That's awesome. 
that's what I wish they they've been doing this whole time. I clicked on the link at about two thirty yesterday, which was already late. It started at noon, and I was in it until nine o'clock at night. I was on that link, waiting for my spot to reserve a panel, and then I realized that was all for nothing because they tweeted. Hey, New York Comic Con fans, we wanted to give you a quick update that the team is working on resolving yesterday's issues to get reservations back up and running successfully. Oh, wait, this is a different update. This is a newer update I haven't even seen yet. (laughs) We will have an answer tomorrow on the new date and time they will go live. So basically, they said, fuck all these reservations. There was too many people trying to access the site. They said tens of thousands of people were trying to access the site. Forget it. We're just throwing them all out. Everybody who who got a res, forget it. Um. If you were able to successfully make your reservations yesterday, you will be able to keep them. At this time, no reservations are completely full and what? No reservations are completely full and all panel exhibitor exclusives and private autographing sessions will be available on a first come first serve basis. More come more to come tomorrow. In the meantime, we still have some incredible announcements coming your way. And then they go on to say, "We want to be clear, all fans who made valid reservations yesterday are able to keep theirs." We are doing an internal review of the accusations brought to us regarding bypass link usage and will be voiding reservations similarly to how we handle scalpers if necessary. Damn. So they they just got way more people trying to reserve panels than they expected. I don't know yeah. what they were expecting. There's always a billion people trying to get into these panels. Yeah. Um, So they can only assume that online there'd be a fuck ton. Um, So I don't know. They 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 screwed it up. And and again, now I have notifications turned on for their Twitter because I don't know when they're going to make the announcement that the reservation system is back up and Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss it. You know, if I if I'm not on my computer all day, just staring at their Twitter tomorrow. Right. So. I don't know what the deal's gonna be with that uh, Mario uh, trailer, the uh, fucking event. Anyway, what's your trauma? You had some issues. Yeah, oh yeah, I got issues. Well, every time I try to, I wasn't sure if we were gonna get media passes this year. Right. Um, so I went ahead and I bought a Saturday ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, buying tickets for New York Comic Con for me always stresses me out, and is always a, a big deal because it it is a wacky system you first have to be a registered fan you have to like create a register like a fan verified profile with read pop to verify that you are a fan and you want to go to this thing (laughs) it's easier for me because i've like verified myself over the years so i get grandfathered in um but then actually buying the ticket like they put you in this pool that doesn't move. And I've had many experiences where I'm trying to buy a ticket and I get shut out of the days I want, even though I'm, uh, I'm, I've been there since the beginning and they always do it at like the, the worst possible times I've had to buy tickets from the backseat of a rental car in the middle <laughs> of Kentucky. I've had to buy the tickets, driving my wife to a bridal shower. I've had to buy this year. I bought tickets with, my son sleeping on me and my daughter wreaking havoc in another room. So that's how I bought my Sunday ticket. Um, and now you don't even need it. Was, yeah. Now I don't even need it. My Saturday ticket, I should say. Um, so I bought a Saturday ticket. Then I, re- then I got to thinking more and I'm like, and actually I should have bought it for Thursday. It would have been easier for me if to go on Thursday. So I went and I bought it. I bought one for Thursday. I was able to return the Saturday ticket. Uh, which they don't make easy. Then we got the media pass, the the professional pass for Thursday. So now yeah. I have two Thursday passes. My Thursday pass, my Wolf Den Thursday pass, got sent to the wrong address and got mailed back to Connecticut, where Reed Pop is located. Um, so I now have an update. I just checked my email. I have to go to the will call booth at Comic Con to pick up my pass. Ugh. And they highly recommend I go on Tuesday or Wednesday because Thursday it's going to start, you know, getting packed. When the fuck do they think I'm going to have oh, time go. to go into the city? You'll Make go? me go. Make me go. Okay, you go. Uh, you need my email address. Do I need your ID? Uh, 
According to their Twitter account, it doesn't say so. Can you ask them if I could pick it up? Uh, yeah, I guess I could. Yeah, so I'll I do that. All right. So there you go. Problem solved. We figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's still. It's just a, such a. But now you yeah. still have an extra ticket for some reason. I do. I I might have someone who wants it though. Okay. So Good. We'll say. Uh, it's just it's always a pain in the ass buying tickets to this event. I've never had yeah. a problem buying tickets to any other convention. You just go online, you buy it. The only other one that like is sort of difficult is San Diego Comic Con, but that's that's not run by Reed Pop. That's run by someone else, and that's a whole other mess. Is Gamescom run by Reed Pop? No, mm-hmm. Reed Pop. I have their their website up. They run C two E two in Chicago. EGX in the UK, Emerald City Comic Con, uh, Florida Supercon, uh, MCM Comic Con in the UK, Minecraft Festival, New York Comic Con. Oh my God, I didn't PAX, know did Minecraft. All the different PAXs, uh, Star Trek Mission Chicago, Pop First, and uh, Star Wars Celebration. Uh, oh, yeah, Star Wars Celebration. Yeah. Uh, Which I've heard is excellent. Metacent says I tried to buy tickets to PAX East once and it sold out immediately. I had no shot. And and Mecha Dragon says or auction it to the community, or the ticket, your ticket, I guess. We, last I've done giveaways for PAX East tickets, mm-hmm. and it's really hard to give away tickets because you gotta go to it. Like if you win it, you gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> and like that's a pain in the ass for a lot for most people to go to a, a a local event that might not be very local to you um so the last time i i did a giveaway for pax tickets uh the first three winners uh so they didn't want them so yeah. they, and they they willingly entered the contest by the way and then they're like no nah, i don't want it um so i just stopped doing the giveaways they asked me to do pack giveaways every time and i just stopped doing them because people don't don't take them I will say the first one was Eric twice, I think. So he's fucking <laughs> an asshole anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway, uh, have you given away that Switch OLED yet? No. That's another thing. I I picked three winners and none of them answered me. It's a fucking <laughs> Switch. I'll keep picking win. I don't know what else to do. I can't run another contest because yeah. I. Uh, it's that's not fair to the people who entered. But they're not playing fair either (laughs) i have to just keep rolling new people i guess um just if you all you people in the chat probably entered fucking just look at your emails yeah (laughs) that's all it takes um anyway anything else you want to do to complain about uh the stupid conventions. I like going to I conventions. Mean, it's just yeah. Uh, there's a lot of fun. there. It is very complex to set up a convention. I understand. Yes, and, and you know, look. I think with the regards to the new E3, I think the idea is there. I think the heart is actually in the right place. I think this could be something to look forward to. Something that we might actually want to go to. The problem is. We've been burned before by both companies. Yes. <laughs> We've been burned by Reed Pop for many years just through sheer aggravation of trying to go. And we've been burned by the ESA who run E3 uh, just over their sheer stupidity and carelessness. So things are not looking good from our perspective, but... Maybe this is the sign of something positive. Maybe this could actually be a good thing. Maybe because they're they're building it again from the ground up to be a media event and a public event. And they're they're actually trying to change it. I agree. I, I think that bringing in Reed Pop is a very good idea because because the ESA can't do this shit on their own anymore. Um I think that it will be better, but I think that uh, there's still a lot of potential for failure, and I think it's uh, not uh, out of the realm of possibility that the shit is still just not going to happen. That that they yeah. just they already canceled it two years in a row. I think that they might uh, 
they, there's a potential that they could just do that again. Um, so if anybody could fix it, uh, it's read pop, but, uh, again, they've had their issues too. Like we just explained with New York comic con, but it's a, it's a big, it's, it's a big undertaking having hundreds of thousands of people going to one place. Uh, so good luck, I guess I will not be going. I will be covering it from my home because, uh, I don't want to do that as will most people. That's the best way to experience E3. It's from your couch. Yeah. For being honest. And you know what? I loved going there and like getting hands on because I like making the videos and stuff. I, I think it's exciting, but um, it doesn't even get as many views as just talking about it at your at your home. Like once you see the thing yeah. come up, you just fire out a video immediately. It'll get more views than if you even got to play it, which is crazy because like, wouldn't you want to hear from somebody who actually got to play it? Like when we went to yeah. E3, we played Smash Brothers. Uh, we were one of the first people to fucking play the new Smash Brothers. And people got more views just talking about the announcement, <laughs> which is insane. Because wouldn't you, again, wouldn't you rather hear from somebody who actually got their hands on it? Um. Anyway, that's all I got to say. Thank you to Jeffrey Sorensen for the 19 months. Hey, guys, did you know you get a free Twitch subscription to use on your favorite streamer every month if you have Amazon Prime and link it to your Twitch? That is Whoa. true. Also, uh, it's September 27th. We're in the middle of September, which means you get a discount on subscriptions if you want to use your own money for it, not just a Twitch Prime. Uh, but they just announced that gifted subs are a, are a big discount. So if you want, if you're one of those that gifts a bunch of subs, now is time to do it because you get a big discount. Also, if you're one of those people that pays for subscriptions, you can stack them now. Like if you want to pay for a whole year of subscription, you do it now and it saves you money. Otherwise, if you do it monthly, you're gonna pay five dollars every month. Figure that out. You could see it when you click the little uh, subscription thing. Uh, again, you don't need to subscribe though. Your view is all that matters, okay? Unless you have a Prime subscription that's sitting there stagnant, not doing anything. Then get the hell over here and drop it. Because yeah. that's free money you're just wasting. Uh, Wicked Spooky, thank you for the six months. Yo, hope you're both doing well. I'm all right. Well, how are you? Uh, So someone was in the chat was saying, did I get a new camera? No, I just got a new mount for it. And it's actually really good. But the problem is, the way my setup is now, I have to sit up very straight. And my spine... Really, really hang it in there, man. Let me tell you. Tilt ya. it down. Tilt it down. You know what? I don't want to touch it because I okay. I just got it like set up, so I'll I'll All fuck right. with it later. But uh for now I will suffer for you. Uh somebody said I looked wide. I'm wide. There you go. <laughs> that is the best way to say, hey, did you gain weight? I've heard it a long time. <laughs> um Wardlock, thanks for the 14 months in September. Thank you. Travel, thanks for the 30 months. Can I interest one of you in adopting me? No. No, I got too many kids. You seem like uh, a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't want to be your dad. Um, anyway. Uh, oh, we have, uh, we got, now's the time. Now's the time. We'll do, do, the, mm -hmm. do, do the thing. Oh, you mean the time where we talk about this episode's sponsor? Yeah. Manscaped. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I, I, you know, we're how many weeks into this sponsorship? And I just now thought, hey, wouldn't it be a better idea to shove everything in the bag they sent us instead of keeping all the boxes on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, but mostly the gentlemen. Welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. It's the season of pumpkin spice and making sure your crotch looks nice. That means sipping cider in a fall breeze and using Manscaped products to trim your balls with ease. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, a company here to make sure that your foliage isn't the only oh. thing shedding its excess leaves. Ew. Even Mother Nature knows it's time to lose the excess clutter for fall. Join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code WOLFDEN. Uh, that is the uh, fall, late September, early October uh, sheet that they wanted us to read from for this uh, for this ad. Now, I, I, you said before it's mostly for the dudes. Listen, women shave too. That is true. And I'm not... and and I mean, a lot of the, they like to use a razor. 
But yeah. let me tell you, you get all the you get all the uh, you get all the the, the 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 good hairy stuff off <laughs> with this thing. It's very gentle. Yes, yes. Look, and I'm not saying women can't use this stuff. It's just that it says man in, in the product. I gave my so, old one to my girlfriend because who else are you going to give it to? We already talked yeah. about this. <laughs> but regardless of what you identify as, this could be the perfect uh, private parts shaving device for you. Uh, of course, the headline product, the lawnmower 4.0, the best, Ooh, the best uh... razor for the little parts down there or the big parts. I don't know your life. Uh, <laughs> it is. It's got a very nice uh, contact-free charge dock. Uh, it's got it's got a little LED light right there, so you can see it. So you can see in the dark if you shave in the dark, like a weird person. Uh, <laughs> it it has a nice ceramic replaceable blade, so that oh, I don't want to break it on camera. That would be yeah. There you go. A nice replaceable ceramic blade. I did not know you could take right that there. out. Easy to clean that way. That's very important. Uh, the lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and the weed whacker uh, nose and ear trimmer. I use that. This is, this is more. F I use that more than the ball trimmer. Yes, because uh, let me tell you something. We are men in our 30s, so we get hair in our ears and nose. Uh, yes. And this thing gets it out better than any other products that I've tried to use for that, including scissors. Don't use scissors. We live in the no. future. Yeah. Uh, the lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and weed whacker nose and ear trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof, so you can keep scaping as the weather is changing. Uh, so there you go. Javis Flip in the chat says, I love my Manscaped, but I use it for my beard. I have a friend who uses theirs for their beard, too. You know, I, I, no I like the luxury of having separate devices now. I used to use yes. the same device for everything. I never did. I wanted to keep my face and my, my place separate. And I'm glad I have a device dedicated to the other half of me. Okay. Um, but of course, that's not all because you can get you can get the uh, lawnmower and the weed whacker in the performance package 4.0 that comes with a nice shed travel bag. And also, which I left at my parents' house, by the way, <laughs> I left all my toiletries in that bag at our parents' house. The, the secret of the Manscaped package <laughs> is, of course, the crop preserver, uh, crop preserver ball deodorant and the crop reviver ball toner. Oh, now, I should leave that here at the studio. That'd be cool. Look, okay, you, you, need a, you need a fresh mid. If you sweat a lot down, if you sweat a lot down there, and you stink a lot down there, these two things together will make you feel in good as new and ready to go uh, on your next adventure, whatever your adventure may be. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that they also make underwear that I may or may not be wearing right now. Oh. I am wearing it right now. It's very comfortable. It's very smooth. It's I, it's nice. It's nice to have. I'm. You know what? I'm, I'll save it for after the ad read. But go go on. <laughs> uh, like we said before, the lawnmower 4.0 and the the weed whacker ear and nose trimmer. They are waterproof trimmers. They are they help reduce uh, nicks and reduce the risk of ingrown hairs and other grooming accidents. I have tried to trim myself down there with scissors. Oh, uh, yes. You ever you ever see The Shining when the elevator opens and mm -hmm. the blood comes out? That four days. You don't want that. You want the Manscaped uh, products, all all of them, the lawnmower, the weed whacker, the whole performance package. Get that, yours That's today. a mistake you make once. Yes. <laughs> using using a scissor. Ge genuinely, these are these are great products. We we personally use them. They do the job and they do it extremely well. If you want to get in on this, then head to Manscaped.com and use the promo code Wolfden for twenty percent off your order and free shipping. That's manscaped.com, promo code WOLFDEN, W-U-L-F-F-D-E-N. Your balls will thank you. Thank you, Will. Thank you very much. No I appreciate problem. that. My balls appreciate that, too. <laughs> uh, yeah, boy, Z Sweezy, thanks for the prime. And uh, we get, so there's a new thing now. Uh, for some reason, when I stream from the studio, it's not bits anymore. It's, it's. It's dollars. 
Like people could donate actual dollars now, but only when I stream right. for the studio for some reason. And Streamlabs has not caught on to that. So it's hard for me to tell who's uh, donating money. And I'm sorry if I miss it. But uh, we got one from Mecha Dragon, who gave us $5. And is that it? No, there was another one. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. It's stupid. Uh, it's Twitch and Streamlabs. Uh, yell at me in the chat if I missed you. Uh, anyway, uh, what I was going to say before was I'm wearing a different sponsor's underwear right now. <laughs> uh, I, I would ask the get to guess what sponsor, but I feel like that might be a conflict of interest. It might. Uh, also, I don't know if you'd be able to. Uh but it'll be uh, in this week's video. This week's video okay. is an underwear sponsor. Uh, anyway. Also, this shirt is from this. Anyway. Well, I mean, you'll get to see it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Bob didn't see my comment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't. It just. It, the whole thing's broken. It just says you cheered with $5 and doesn't say what happened. What the comment was or anything. Oh, wait, I found it. Bob's video on 2020's E3 is still one of my favorite videos from him. He was so pissed off in that video. Yeah, I'd recommend if you want to know more details about why we hate E3, go watch that video. Yeah. Um, I still like, I, 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 I also like that video. Um, anyway, let's go on and talk about uh, ID, Ro ID RuPaul for giving us uh, a gifted sub. <laughs> But also, let's go ahead and talk about uh, why everybody's mad at Dunky right now. Uh, popular content creator Jason Gastro, better known as video game Dunky or just Dunky, has announced that he is launching a game publisher called Big Mode. Speaking in an announcement video, Gastro said he was sick of watching from the sidelines and believes he'll be able to use his reach and experience critiquing video games to help bring promising indie titles to the market. However, many industry pundits and developers have questioned his qualifications for running a game development company and suggest that Dunkey's announcement is reductive to the work that goes into modern publishing business. Gastro, who founded Big Mo with his wife, Leah, uh, has over 7 million subscribers to his YouTube channel, Video Game Dunkey, and more than 1.3 million Twitter followers. I've been on YouTube for 11 years now. I'm not going to try and do an impression of him. And one of the core themes of my channel has I've been always on the been channel for 11 dunk. years now. And one of the core themes of my channel has cool always features. been to slam dunk soulless crash grabs into the garbage can lift up and praise the uh, true spy. <laughs> for years and years and years. It's it's hard to do right. It's for hard. Years I can't do it. Now, I've always sought out the very best indie games out there. And have tried to do them justice, putting millions of eyes on the games that actually deserve attention. He added, "A lot of games out there, un a lot of games out there, understand how to emulate the look of our favorite games, but don't deliver where it actually counts. Many of the true games out there are being drowned out in a sea of mediocrity. Uh, you need someone who can help you be seen. I want Big Mo to act as my seal of approval, which is something that I do not apply lightly. I am not looking for creative control over your games." but I do want to be involved. I am sick of sitting on the sidelines waiting for great games to be to appear. Now I want to get in there and help make it happen. Uh, Gastro claims that his company uh, had put a lot of effort into making the most developer-friendly contracts possible and argue that he would bring insane value to the table. Following Big Moan's announcement, some reacted with skepticism and questioned whether Donkey had the right credentials to lead a video games publisher. Some even questioned whether the announcement itself was a joke. Uh, Danny O'Dwyer, <laughs> the founder of video game documentary production company No Clip, commented, We gotta drop the naive shtick that having opinions on games is a qualification for understanding just about anything about development. He added, It also raises many ethics questions, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt for now. I'll just say that I don't want I don't know many indies who want an involved publisher uh, with no experience or industry rep. Uh, Vlambeer developer Rami Ishmael uh, wrote that he was happy to see a new publisher emerge but urged any developers considering signing with Big Mo to heed caution. Listen, I support anyone who wants to, pub to publish throw money at indie games, but indies, if you're going to take a deal from someone whose publishing qualifications are I play games a lot, make sure you're upfront with 130% plus of a well-paid, comfortable uh, budget. 
Good Publishing is a relative complex organization, selection, branding, marketing, production support, platform contacts, uh, localization connections, QA, uh, QA connections, release management, and to make sure all of those that de- all the devs and to, and to take pressure off the devs, all those, uh, need to fire correctly at the correct time. However, Noel Berry, a programmer behind the indie hit Celeste, uh, said he believed Donkey might surprise with, uh, might surprise with an, with his eye for fun design. I genuinely think Donkey has a good eye for design, uh, for fun design, and if he wants to throw money at indie devs, why not? Sure, they may, sure they might hit some hard realities of making games, but like, uh, that's how you learn. He wrote, "I can't speak for the other games he mentioned in his video, but he also found Celeste way before it came out. Followed it for a year after, and made a day one video on it because he liked our demo." I don't think it was weird he used it in as an example. That's I think the biggest deal is that he used in his little announcement video, which was good. Mm-hmm. Uh he had all just all of the games he's played. And like yeah. uh and that this I think this is what pissed people off the most. Um he had Celeste in there and and one of them was uh he had uh, uh Sonic Mania. He had a mm-hmm. copy of the Switch version of Sonic Mania. He put a big mode sticker on it. And it's like, you just because you played it, what does that have to do with your publishing yeah. <laughs> like credentials? That that's that seems to be the big the big criticism here. Like, yes, you like video games, you play a lot of video games, you know what makes a good video game even, but that doesn't necessarily mean you know what it takes to make a good video right. game or release a video game at all. Like, yes, I love comic books. I read a lot of comic books. I know what makes a good comic book and what doesn't. I don't know the first thing about writing a comic book, publishing a comic book, getting it out there. You know, so I would not want to start something like that without, you know, somebody who actually knows the business inside and out. Yeah, I I, I think uh, I think whatever he makes is going to be great. I completely support Donkey in his endeavor. I think he's going to hit some harsh realities and it's going to be a bigger struggle than he probably expects. Yeah. But uh, I think he'll probably come out just fine in the end. I think you got to you gotta fucking, you know, if you want to do something, you got to face it head on and, and figure mm-hmm. it out in the field, you know? Um, the fact that he wants to be involved with with some of the games that they're publishing seems that's probably uh, not something that a lot of developers are going to be interested in. Um, right. Also, also uh, the fact that uh, he said, I know it makes a game good, so I'm only going to... He said, we're only going to publish good games. And it's like, you're going to get a pitch for a game. Yeah. And then there's a big potential that the finished product isn't going to be what you thought it was going to be. And then what? Are you going to just cancel it? You're going to eat all that cost? Are you going to promote it to your 7 million subscribers? Like, what are you going to do when you hit that point? Like, You might be contractually obligated to promote it. Like, what makes a good game? A lot of times people don't know what makes a good game until the game is out. You know, there are stories of games that, like, don't really hit their stride until years after they come out among us didn't become popular until years after it came out right so you know you may know what makes a good game but like if you're early in development you know that game might not be the game that is eventually released also too what if they're coming up with a game that what if they want to make a jrpg donkey famously does not like (laughs) jrpgs that a lot of people were talking about that that was like one of the top upvotes in the subreddit um there's also stories of games uh hitting their like figuring out their core most interesting gameplay mechanics really late in development like towards yeah. the end like a state like a life-saving gameplay mechanic i think in the last of us ellie had a hitbox until like a week before they launched or something <laughs> so uh i uh what i didn't even i first heard about this from this tweet by this guy Dave makes, which is in the article. It says, LOL, Donkey starting a publishing company with the ethos. I have played so many games. I know what makes them good and bad. So I will only publish good ones. About to learn some stuff the hard way. So uh, I I read that and I was like, uh-oh, what's that about? And then I watched his video and I felt like I didn't give the video a fair shot because I came in it 
from this perspective. Right. Uh, so I tried to give it a fair shot, but yeah, no, I could see where everybody's coming from. Uh, but again, I think that he's gonna. I think he's gonna. He's gonna have to face these harsh realities. Yeah, and he'll. I think he'll be fine. He's just gonna make an indie publishing company. I it's think not, also too, like the video he made was done in the style of his regular YouTube right. videos. So it definitely could. I definitely can see why people might construe it as a joke. Had he come out and done it in a different style, like if he was on camera talking about it, but he did a traditional donkey video to announce his new uh, business venture, basically. So, so when I saw it, I was like, oh, people are upset that he's got other games in this. Like, that's not a big deal. It's the equivalent because he always has games. In yeah, it. he always has B-roll of games. So he never shows his face or anything. Um, so. I was like, this is the equivalent of doing a drama video with CSGO sledding in the background, you know? Like, it's really not, it's, it's meaningless, all the video, all the gameplay he was showing, until he put a big mode sticker on Sonic Mania. And I was like, okay, well, now we're getting a little, yeah. getting a little crazy here. Uh, I also want to comment on, uh, there seems to be a big divide. Uh, I talked about this on a stream a few days ago. There seems to be a big divide between uh, a the game developers, uh, journalists, and YouTubers. There's like a trifecta of like uh, yeah. animosity between the three of those. Uh, so I think Donkey's getting the shit end of both of those sticks. Like, you know, like uh, games industry people are like, it's not as easy as you think it's going to be Donkey. Like, it, it's you can't do what we do. It's going to be a lot harder. And then you have games journalists who are like, you can't, you can't do that. Like, we know more about the industry than you do, and blah blah blah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I think that uh, most of the criticism comes from a little bit of that animosity that. YouTubers, especially people as big as Donkey, would get from game developers and from journalists. So yeah. uh, uh, it's a little skewed in that way. Uh, but that's not to say there haven't been uh, uh, YouTubers that have done this before. The Game Grumps started their own publishing company. They made Dream Daddy, which was hugely successful. And Aaron made a whole little tweet thread about his journey into into being a publisher um right and i think the reason donkey wants to do this is because he sees the, that he's he has a big outlet to promote games uh dream daddy was promoted by the game grumps and it was probably hugely successful because of that then they released another game called a soviet jump game which was great but it failed miserably and uh that probably wasn't helped by the promotion that the Game Grumps had. And I believe uh, Gerard the Completionist also published games. I, c I don't know which ones he did, but he apparently had a, had his own like publishing arm. But the difference there is he didn't make a big YouTube video saying we're only going to publish good games and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, again, I think there's nothing wrong with Donkey trying to become a games publisher. Uh, I just think uh, people criticized the announcement, uh, rightfully so, and let him f f let him make these harsh decisions and face these realities of how hard it's going to be when he gets there, and we'll we'll see how he comes out in the end. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Cosmic Titan, thanks for the subscription. Uh, Gerard had something to do with Mina the Hollower. Uh, what did he have to do with that? I know he's close with Yacht Club, and he did yeah. promotion for Shovel Knight Dig with Aaron. Uh, I mean, but if if that's the case, Mina the Hollower is made by Yacht Club Games, an actual game development company. He might have been brought in as like a consultant, but he's working with an actual game developer. Yeah, I'm not sure what he did with them. Yeah, Yacht Club yeah. is publishing it on their on their own. They don't yeah. need help in that regard. Uh Colin Moriarty published games. Yeah, well he's a I would consider him a journalist. Yeah. Um what else? Um uh, Yeah, again, I if you're if you're 
if you want to go into that field, uh, well, then you have Willow over here who says, publish, if publishers are anything like record labels, which they're a lot like record labels, yes. then we don't need them anymore. Uh, and that's true. We have... To a uh, point. To, to a, a point, point. You don't need them. You don't need them anymore. Because so, publishers, like the article said, publishers are good, you know, for if you want to put it on a console, they have contacts yeah. at, at the console manufacturer. Um, they can help with things like uh, localization with budget. A publisher is supposed to provide the budget and the marketing for right. the video games. So that's what a publisher is supposed to do and help like distribute it to different platforms. So to an extent, you still need that if you want to get it on a, on a console on an Xbox, Sony, or Switch. Um, you still need them if you want to uh, distribute it internationally to a certain point. Um, you, you might even still need it to get an ESRB rating. I don't know. Like there, there's still value there in so, having so a publisher. I'd argue it's very similar to a YouTube channel on a multi-channel network. The yes. publisher is not going to help you at all unless you mm -hmm. are worth being helped. So like if you're doomed to be a flop, they want nothing to do with you. Even if you're published by this publisher, uh, they might not give to put too much work into your game unless they see potential uh that that game 30 xx that i talk about a lot it's that uh mega man uh x mm -hmm. style rogue like uh game uh they don't have a publisher at all they're doing it all by themselves and they go to conventions by themselves they pay their way into the conventions they uh got their own esrb rating and all of that stuff and and they're talking to the consoles to get their game on the consoles themselves which is a nightmare uh, but they're yeah. they're forcing their way through it. Uh, but then you have games like A Curse to Golf, which does have a publisher, but then they still do like a lot of stuff on their own. So I don't know. Uh, it, I guess it depends on on where you're at. But uh, sometimes a publisher can be very helpful. Other times you could just do it yourself. Anyway, uh, we got Kai Quill. Thank you for the seven months. E3 isn't real. True. <laughs> what is real? Honestly. Nothing. Nothing. Just forget forget it all. Uh, hey, remember that Grand Theft Auto leak that we talked about last week? Extensive. Yeah. Somebody got arrested for it. <laughs> yeah, they found a guy. Yeah. Uh, uh, today, London police off, uh, London City Police announced that they have arrested a 17-year-old from Oxfordshire Thursday evening. Uh, while the police have yet to confirm why, it's been reported that the teen was arrested in connection with the recent Uber and Grand Theft Auto 6 leaks. The suspect remains in uh, city police custody at this time. Uh, as reported by The Desk and reporter Matthew Keyes, the arrest of the suspected 17-year-old GTA hacker by police in the United Kingdom was part of an investigation of being conducted by the FBI and UK's cybercrime unit. Uh, it had been previously reported that the FBI was likely looking into the recent hacks at Uber and Rockstar Games. A source told the desk that the teenager was being held on numerous charges, including conspiracy to attack at least two different company computers. Um, it is believed that the teenage hacker arrested Thursday in Oxfordshire is connected to the hacker group, uh, group uh, Last Puss. Uh, there's a dollar sign in there. Uh, this group of hackers is allegedly involved in high digital intrusions at other large companies including uber microsoft cisco samsung nvidia and okta uh the group first showed up in 2021 hacking brazil's ministry of health it was thought that the group had gone inactive but earlier this month it allegedly ramped up its activities again and targeted uber and rockstar games the gta 6 leak uh that occurred over uh over the weekend was one of the largest in video game history 90 videos showcasing the early development footage of the next gta game uh, were posted to GTA forums and quickly spread across the internet. Footage seems to confirm that uh, the game would be set in Vice City and star two different characters, Bonnie and Clyde style. Uh, do, 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 update. Uh, Rock, Rockstar, reported by, as reported by Bloomberg, the alleged teen hacker possibly connected to the massive and recent leaks of, appeared in court today, specialist youth oh court in London. The 17-year-old Oxfordshire boy denied using his phone as a tool to gain access to Rockstar's private files and servers. Uh, last week, the teen was charged with two counts of breach of bail conditions and two counts of misuse of a computer. 
The prosecution alleges the teenager was hacking companies like Microsoft and Uber and then holding them to ransom. The judge in the case uh, has referred has referred it to the higher court where it will be heard at a later date. Police have yet to officially confirm the teen's connection with the leak, although uh, it has been reported. Uh, reporter Matthew Keyes claims sources have told him the boy was indeed involved. So, uh, first of all, I want to say the London police uh, tweeted a very Grand Theft Auto look at tweet. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I checked their Twitter to see if they have other stuff like this, and they kind of do. So, uh, I guess they didn't mean it, but it just says arrested in big letters. <laughs> With like a city on the background. They missed an yeah. opportunity to write wasted, but I'll, yeah. I'll allow it. Um, I don't know. Uh, th- he's um, clearly like a minor. 17 is not old. Uh, a lot of people are kind of seeing this as like a win because they don't like the fact that Grand Theft Auto got leaked. Uh, yeah. I think this is just an unfortunate, un- an unfortunate circumstance where a young person is now going to fucking go to jail <laughs> for something they probably didn't think was that big of a deal. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they got to face some repercussions, right? They did yeah. the legal thing. Yeah. But, uh, you know. I mean, still. I don't know how laws work over there, but, you know, it, over here, 17 years old, that's a minor. And, like, that's, you know... You get, you get, you know, you serve time, but it's not a lot. Yeah. You know, I'm afraid like that this kid's going to serve time, like a couple of years and then like eventually be allowed out into the public again mm-hmm. for, for what, for leaking, you know, unfinished video game footage. It's yeah. not really something that, you know, is worth going to jail over. I mean, there was other like classified documents too. So it yeah, is, but it is theft of, uh, I don't know, digital goods. I don't know what, what you call it. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, in the grant, like, he didn't kill anyone. He didn't release medical records or, like, private government documents. He didn't sell anything to the Russians or anything like that. He did use it for for blackmail, which is probably... Yeah, which, which is illegal. bad, yes. <laughs> that should be the most that he's getting, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, shit for. Um, It's just, you know... Uh, I don't think it's anything to celebrate that a child is going to prison. Yeah. Um, whatever. Uh, in the middle of all that, I got an ad for this Sideshow Collectibles uh, Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> I clicked on it because I thought, is this from uh, Obi-Wan? The rest uh, of it what? isn't, but this one with the flowing like cape thing looked like it was from Obi-Wan. No, that's um, that's his Clone Wars costume. Uh, that's what he wore in the Clone Wars cartoon they just used Hayden Christensen's actual face oh so it's the cartoon yeah you, you'll see a lot of like oh, uh, merchandise like that where they'll dress up the actual like a model of the actual actor in the outfit he wore in the Clone Wars cartoon I understand yeah uh, I did uh, I went ahead and I pre-ordered the uh, they have a uh, Darth Vader that's like battle damaged. Ooh, and that's I, nice. And I pre-ordered it because it's the same size as the Obi Wan that I have. <laughs> so it'll be nice to uh, have. I'm on the fence because they now make. You, you've seen uh, Darth the Darth Vader redeemed image where he's all in white. No, you never seen the redeemed Darth Vader. It's literally just Darth Vader, but he's white because he's been redeemed. Uh, Hasbro made a black series figure of it. Oh, I see. And I, I see. and I kind of want it, but it comes in like the comic book case and that adds like $5 to the price tag. Mm. So I'm like, I'm that's why I'm on the fence about it. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah, it's really nice. That's cool. I want to find art from Vader down, but I don't know if it's for sale. Uh, oh, yeah, that would be good. There's a lot of good art in that. I know. Uh, I'll be looking for that at Comic Con. Yeah, unless if you want my Comicsology account, I can just give it to you. You can just print out the pictures. No, that's not how it works. I know, I know. Anyway, uh, next, moving on, we have oh, we have Rise Frog who gives us twenty five months. What is up, Wolf Bros? 
How are you doing? I've been playing the ranked Splatoon lately. We hit S and I be grinding for S plus. Congratulations. Nice. I played a little bit of Splatoon, then I decided I don't care anymore. <laughs> I'm just gonna play Mario until my fingers fall off. I I've not played Splatoon. Probably won't. I did start playing Roller Drome. Gang. It's as good <laughs> as I thought it was gonna be. I have to I have to try that. <laughs> it's so good. It's it's so good. It's so fun. It's I it, it is Tony Hawk with guns. Let's not mince words here. But it's it's just so cool. It's such a cool game. Everyone go get it if you have a PlayStation or Steam. Uh I want to talk about some more drama real quick. Yes. We're a drama channel now. <laughs> uh try guys guy uh cheats on his wife no i'm kidding that's a joke uh that actually happened but we're not talking about that because that's yeah. none of our business uh gamestop launches game informer nft covers this is that drama sucks. believe it or not this that. is drama <laughs> yeah. uh so I, i'm gonna just talk about it very briefly Ga gamestop this is gamestop nft and it's a verified account they tweeted uh Game Informer cover, NFTs are here. Community artists, and then they name a bunch of artists that made the thing, are all creating for us. Collect all three or four, winky face. And obviously people are pissed because nobody wants anything to do with NFTs. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the replies... Oh, am I not going to be able to find it now? There was a reply... Well, now I don't want to talk about it if I'm going to get the guy in trouble. <laughs> oh, he deleted it. Oh, oh, I don't want to. I don't want to get the guy in trouble. Um, yeah, basically, Game Informer was not on board with this at all. Uh, GameStop <laughs> just fucking did it, and uh, yeah, and they were all like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> and then, and and of course, they're probably. I don't know. Something's going on internally there that's not a, yeah, not as some unsavory shits going on between GameStop and 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 their sister websites. This is like a really malicious way to use uh the branding from GameStop. Yeah, I, GameStop is unfortunately like all in on the NFT scam right now. Like they're really yeah. trying to push it. They have their own fucking Twitter account for it. For God's sake. Um, I don't know. You you, you kind of hope because like people are starting to get the message that NFTs are dumb and nobody wants them. But you'll get something like this come up. Um, and I don't. I, I know you don't pay attention to this, but it, it, it's kind of relevant. Last week, Hasbro announced that they were bringing back the starting lineup series of figures. Mm -hmm. Um, it's sports figures, so it's a it's a line of basketball figures. They're fifty dollars each and instead of coming with a trading card like they used to in the 90s they come with an nft of a <laughs> it's insane to me that these big businessmen don't see they're just so brain dead they don't see like the they it's see the shocking. dollar signs they don't see the public perception and and that doesn't mean enough to them for some reason it's crazy. But like what i don't understand is like this has been going on for months now the the nft market has just been like on a sharp decline it's been very clear that nobody wants this stuff and yet you just see one after the other they just keep yeah i still get emails from dc comics asking me if i want harley quinn nfts <laughs> the answer is no here's uh logan paul uh an nft i bought for six hundred and twenty three thousand dollars that's now worth ten <laughs> ten dollars by the way um and here's a guy ben hansen who used to work at game informer hey gamestop please support the real game informer it's made up of real people who could use some positions filled to help them out yeah uh so yeah yeah i don't know i mean i've, I've said it before nfts uh seem like just you know what i've been getting i've been, i mean i get a lot of like nft like replies and stuff on twitter uh and i always report them as spam because it's all that's it's always people just trying to get you to like join the contest or like yeah. promote this and follow so that i can get more followers um in the past couple days i've been getting web three 
like solicitations. Like, hey, Bob, uh, you know that Web3 is the future and we have this new thing and blah, blah, blah. blah. And you don't know what it is. It just says it's Web3. It, it's NFTs. Uh, NFTs are part of Web3. So that, that, that's what it is. That could That could be it. Yeah. Nobody has ever had anything of value that's part of web three like and and call it web three <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway uh so yeah uh you know our stance on nfts is stupid and uh yeah. they're all dying for a reason uh anyway uh jeffrey swords says what's with all the crypto spam comments on popular instagram profiles the last few months they're they're getting really desperate they're trying the, yeah the economy cr- is crashing and so is uh crypto the economy so. is crashing and so is the fake economy they thought would yeah. save them <laughs> uh red cats up says hey there just want you to know that i really love nintendo podcast thanks welcome to the other one <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh special announcement will's gonna be on the nintendo podcast in a few days surprise melon farmers <laughs> it's it's we're gonna get a very wolf den nintendo podcast Yes, this week. it's it's, it's going to be... Uh, we should have gotten shirts. Wolf Den Cross Nintendo. <laughs> this is probably my favorite episode. So uh, stay tuned. This was that. fun. This was, that was fun. Uh, let's talk about the Logitech G Cloud. Yes, arriving in October for $350. Logitech officially announced its G Cloud gaming handheld uh, after a teaser and a leak last month. The Android-powered $349.99 handheld will arrive in North America on October 17th with access to the Google Play Store, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and NVIDIA's GeForce Now service. While while you'll be able to play Android mobile games, the focus will really be on cloud gaming, and the handheld has been engineered this way to provide 12 hours or more of battery life. The cloud gaming handheld, has a 7-inch 1080p ISP touchscreen with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio and 60 hertz refresh weight. Uh, weight. We've went <laughs> weight. The white, the white I'm handheld. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> uh, uh, the white handheld includes two offset analog sticks, a D-pad, a Y, B, A, and X button. Um, there's also four buttons on the front, Logitech G, Home, Menu, and the Context Menu button. Logitech G buttons work much like the jewel on the Xbox bu- uh, controller, bringing up a submenu that allows you to pause or quit games. The home button simply brings you back to Logitech's uh, launcher. There's also two bumper buttons and two trigger buttons, much like more modern controllers. Uh, Logitech's handheld also includes haptics, a gyroscope, and remappable controls. Inside, uh, it uses a Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G processor. Uh, which is an octa-core CPU that runs at uh, 2.30, 2.3 hertz, gigahertz. There's also 4 gigs of RAM, uh, 64 gigs of UFS storage. A single USB-C 3.1 port will charge the device, and it should charge the 6,000 milliamp battery um, in about two and a half hours. Logitech has also provided an SD card for expansion, but there's no... There's no 5G or SIM card support here, so you'll always need to be near Wi-Fi for cloud gaming. Uh, Logitech worked with Microsoft and NVIDIA to integrate Xbox Cloud Gaming and NVIDIA's GeForce Now services into the handheld. The Switch-like UI will allow, will allow you to launch each service, but the Xbox Cloud Gaming app is just a basic progressive web app, so there's no real deep integration into the device. It also means that you can't pin specific cloud games to the home screen either. The real draw of the device is the promise of 12 hours of battery life and its lightweight frame. Uh, the, the Logitech G cloud gaming handheld is less wide than both the Steam Deck and the Switch, and it weighs just 430 grams or one pound. That's a little heavier than a Switch, but it's a lot lighter than the Steam Deck. This thing might be smaller than I'm expecting. Uh, Logitech also partnered with Tencent on this handheld and has learned, leaned on the Chinese company's expertise in software to help design the Android launcher. Logitech has a handheld mode uh, with its game launcher and a classic Android tablet launcher mode if you want to use it outside of gaming. Apps like YouTube and Chrome will also be pre-installed alongside uh, the, the gaming apps. 
Android support does mean that this handheld is capable of running some Android games, but Logitech is marketing it for cloud gaming. That's a fresh market for handheld consoles, as typically mobile gamers want to access their games while traveling in cars, trains, and planes where internet connectivity isn't solid. You'll need to constantly be near Wi-Fi signal to uh, to use the Logitech G handheld, which may reduce its appeal. Uh, Logitech appears to be testing the waters by limiting the launch to the U.S. and Canada in October. To entice early adopters, there's a limited $300 pre-order ahead of its retail price of $350. Uh, the pricing is right in between the Switch and the Steam Deck, so it could be a tough sell for what's mostly a cloud gaming device. Um, it will be available on Amazon, Best Buy, and Logitech's own website. It looks like it's uh, still three hundred dollars. It's still it's still on sale. Okay. Uh, I got one. I'll be testing <laughs> it. Uh, it's not an endorsement. Don't get it. It looks stupid. I, I well, I don't know. So it's not very powerful. Uh, Scatterbrain yeah. in the chat says, I just realized this isn't even as powerful as the Odin. Odin's got a Snapdragon 845. Uh, that's not the point. The point is uh, to stream games, which yeah. is why it's going to have a 12-hour battery life and why uh, it doesn't need a lot of power. Um, yeah. That is a completely different use case. I mean, the Odin, to be fair, was marketed as a streaming device, but we all know what it was really for. They they yeah. real they just couldn't market it as a, as an emulation machine. I'm sure this thing will be able to run emulation stuff because I think it's just Android, is it not? Yeah, it's just Android. So yeah, you'll be able to put emulators on here. It just won't be yeah. as good. Uh, and it's expensive. I think three hundred dollars is. Pretty expensive for a yeah, device that's only for, streaming. Yeah, that's that's the thing. If it, if you could download games to it, if you could save games offline, then maybe. But it just I don't want to say it sounds uh, put together like slapped together at the last minute. But if you're not going to support playing games natively, then charging as much as a Switch, which can play games natively without an internet connection, it just seems like a foolish, foolish endeavor. The UI they show is Game Pass. So they're heavily yeah. marketing this as a Game Pass well, thing. Also, too, like the article said, there's it's not a dedicated Game Pass app. It's the web app. It's like the website through a proprietary browser. So you can't pin act, you know individual games to your dashboard for quick access. You have to go to the web app to launch everything. They don't they have an Android app. The that's not what this is getting. With access to Google Play Store, Xbox Cloud Gaming, and GeForce Now service. While uh, you'll, you'll be able to play Android mobile games, the focus is really on cloud gaming. I think they mean the that it is the app, the Xbox Cloud Gaming app. Like you, you can't uh, it's, pin you can't pin Halo to your to your uh, Android home screen, but you can says, open the Xbox Cloud Gaming app. It says the Xbox Cloud Gaming app is just a basic progressive web app. So there's no real deep integration into the device. This also means you can't pin specific cloud games to the home screen either. I think that's uh, that's what it is on 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 iPhone, but on Android, I think that's a little. It's not giving it enough credit calling it just a web app. It's it's an app. It's an app that you launch from the home the home screen. Right, but I think if you're going to buy a device specifically to play Game Pass games, you would want a much more a much more robust, a much more integrated experience than just, you know, a web app. You know, you uh, want like an actual program. <laughs> it I mean, it's a streaming service. So I I, I yeah. it's hard for me to say that it's a program because it is kind of just a launcher. It is just an app that has all of the different stuff, but it's it's a little more than say what I did to my Steam Deck. My Steam Deck has yeah. Xbox Cloud Gaming, but if you click Xbox Cloud Gaming, it opens the Edge browser. Like that is legit a web app. Yeah, this is more. Uh, uh, this is more of an app than the Android app is more of an app than say what I have on my Steam Deck. So I think okay. that the article's being a little regressive here. But it is just it, like a like a contained thing. Like you you can't right. put a Halo icon on your your uh Android launcher. You will have to click the Xbox Cloud Gaming like icon. Um I don't know what 
type of skin Logitech's going to have on the Android launcher. Um, I'm assuming if you really want it to be an xCloud machine, you could just set it to open xCloud right when you turn the stupid thing on. Uh, yeah. Also, it looks like Microsoft is kind of all over this. Uh, Xbox Wire made an article that said, take Xbox to more places with Xbox Cloud Gaming and Xbox Remote Play on Logitech G Cloud Gaming handheld. Uh, and then Phil Spencer quote tweeted and said, I've been using the Logitech G Cloud for about a month. Incredible streaming device for playing while I'm away from my console. I love the feel, the battery life, and the screen size. Took it to Europe and uh, Tokyo Game Show with me and had a great time playing, even on hotel Wi-Fi, smiley face. And then Xbox replied and said, we noticed. And it's a picture of Phil Spencer showing the Logitech G Cloud to uh, Hideo Kojima. So there you go. There you go. Uh, and it kind of looks exact from this angle. It looks exactly like an Aya Neo Air. Yeah. Um, all these stupid things look the same. I will say uh, cloud streaming gets a little bit of a bad rap. I think that it does have use cases. And I think it's better than what most people make it out to be. Especially mm -hmm. if you have a good internet connection. If you have a bad internet connection, you could forget it. And if you want to play single player games... Uh, even like Deathloop and like Forza and stuff. I think that it's got merit for stuff like that. Um, right. Otherwise, if you've got no interest in cloud gaming, you have no interest in this and you can just yeah. forget about it. I just, the, the fact that you have to be connected to a Wi-Fi signal at all times, the point of a handheld is to take it with you and play on the go. And you're all, you will often be playing in places that don't have any internet connection. So... It, for it to be a cloud gaming device which requires some sort of connection and not have the ability to connect to uh, cellular or anything like that that does kind of limit the device in a way yeah and, and and that is part of the reason why cloud gaming is a very niche thing yeah. um Sony boss in the chat says, Hey Wolf, then have you kept playing on emulators on the Steam Deck? I just got mine and uh, I'm just installing stuff. I dabbled a little bit last night and then i'm gonna have a video up on hopefully thursday um but uh for the most part no i haven't been playing emulators on my steam deck i've been uh playing them on the uh odin no not the odin the retroid pocket 3 until it broke and now i have to send it back and now i'm playing them on the miu mini the the amber nick you gave me does that play in 64 games or yes not? yes <laughs> it, does. it does okay yeah does it play them well uh yes Okay. I, it, I it doesn't play a lot of things as well as some of my other devices, but uh it plays it can it plays N64 well. Okay. I'm just making sure cuz I don't know if you saw but now somebody released the core for the analog pocket for NES. Yes. And I'm like I cuz I really want to use the analog as like my go-to like retro yeah. handheld, but you know, if that one is good for more stuff I don't know. I'm pretty sure I set it up already. I might have even put emulators on it. I mean, I mean, I might. I I think I set it up, but I don't think I put ROMs on it. I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, I have ROMs. It's not the the end of the. World. Um. But yeah, I did see that about the analog. I I want to make a video on it, but I don't know when I'll be able to, and I don't yeah. even know what I'll say. Like, I, okay, it plays <laughs> ROMs, and they're good. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, do you think PS One is possible on the analog pocket potentially? That'll be tough because it's missing two shoulder buttons, True. and you know it won't it won't support Dual Shock games. I mean, uh, there's like barely any Dual Shock games. I know, uh, but that may escape fans, man. <laughs> I uh, I'm frequently surprised by what devices are capable of playing PlayStation One games. Like the Mi yeah. U Mini has no reason has no right playing PlayStation One games, but it plays them very well. So. I wouldn't be surprised if the uh, analog pocket was capable of PlayStation 1. Anything after that? Hell no. Um, anyway, let's plow our house through the rest of this. Um, we got Splinter Cell Remake job listing reveals the original game's story is being rewritten for modern audiences. So I'll just read oh, the job description this. as found by uh, PlayStation Universe. Uh, 
using the first Splinter Cell game as our foundation, we are rewriting and updating the story for a modern day audience. We want to keep the spirit and themes of the original game while exploring our characters and the world to make them more authentic and believable. As a scriptwriter at Ubisoft Toronto, you will join the narrative team and help create a cohesive and compelling narrative experience for a new audience of Splinter Cell fans. So we're get so if you if you may you may or may not know we're getting a new Splinter Cell game yay um, it's a full on remake reboot whatever you want to call it um, and this article is basically confirming that by saying that it's going to be redone for a modern audience whatever that means <laughs> yeah I don't know uh, you know I never really thought Splinter Cell had a great story until <laughs> Conviction. And that yeah. story was only good because it was a copy and paste of 24. <laughs> yeah. I think you, you think back to like the old Splinter Cell games and they were really about, they were really steeped in like the classic Tom Clancy post 9-11, you know, mentality, all shadowy figures, all secrets, um, a lot of like techno babble and technology and political um, stuff that like I had no yeah. interest in when I was growing like up. Like red red tape politics that like you know are there to make it sound a lot more interesting and threatening than things actually are. But yep. that was a style for a very long time, and especially like in the 2000s and a little bit into the 2010s even. Um it does make you think like what would be the equivalent in the 2020s, you know, what you know, military themed, you know, piece of media could be like the blueprint for what Splinter Cell in 2022 could be, you know? Yeah, I have no idea. Because, yeah, like back then we had no shortage of, you know, media to pull from. We had other Tom Clancy novels, of course, when he was still alive. We had uh, 24, you know, but yeah, now I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Even Call of Duty like isn't really doing i mean they changed up modern warfare that story but it's yeah. kind of the same shit just with a it's just different it's like the same it's the same sort of like formula it's just yeah switched around a little bit it, it, yeah. it doesn't seem like it's more modern or anything um i mean i guess it could be about trying to stop a virus coming out of china <laughs> could be of course could, but could be the i don't know uh, the Russian conflict, but I yeah. mean, we've been doing Russian conflicts <laughs> like yeah. even back then. So, yeah. So I think the big deal in Splinter Cell was Georgia. Georgia was like the big where all the shit was going down. Yeah. Um. So, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what this, this could possibly be, be about. I'm excited for more Splinter Cell. Uh, yes. I don't trust Ubisoft. No. But, <laughs> so I'm skeptical, but I'll give it a yeah. try. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, where are we now? We're at uh, this. I saw this uh, on the Twitter. I got tagged a lot. I will give it a try. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can plow through this real quick. Uh, it's been 32 years since the Latin Nintendo launched Super Mario World, the last truly classic Mario Brothers platformer before the modern era. Um, since we then, we've got numerous 3D Mario games, but many fans have wondered over the years, uh, will Nintendo ever turn to the classic era and give us more great platformers in the style of Super Mario Brothers 3 and Super Mario World? The answer to that question is no, but Super Mario Maker 2 uh, level creator and Twitter user Metroid Mike 64 has given us the next best thing. After what they described as seven years of work, uh, Metroid Mike 64, aka Mikey Mike on Switch Online, has built a spiritual successor to the original Mario Tetralogy, boldly titled Super Mario Brothers 5. It contains 40 courses and eight full worlds. They use a wide variety of game styles and levels too, with Super Mario World making it making up 24 courses, Mario Brothers 3 making up 14, and the final two courses being made in the original Super Mario Brothers style. So I thought that they were complete copy and paste of those games. Like I thought right. that there were levels from Mario 3 in this. But no, I think it's just the game devolves in art style as you go, basically. Okay. <laughs> like you start off in Super Mario World style and then you, you basically go back in time. 
So it says the game, he says, the gameplay is all classic Mario. I'm not trying to troll you or purposely try to kill you. I'm trying to provide you with something Nintendo should have done already. Make a full Mario game with Super Mario Maker 2. That's fun as heck. Uh, and he says all seven Koopalings are here as end of world bosses. Some basic, some unique. Uh, and that's that. There's a lot here. He yeah. previews a lot with a lot of different videos. Uh, I'm excited to give it a try. Uh, I'm yeah. always interested in popular super worlds when people make them because they're usually great. Uh, yeah. If you want to try it yourself, the maker ID is 0G9XN4FNF. That's 0G9XN4FNF. Did I get that right? Did I dis dyslexia yeah, my did. way through yeah. that? It's on the screen right now anyway if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, there's also a four hour, uh, game explain video that basically runs through the whole thing. If you don't play Mario maker and you just want to see what this is all about. Um, so what was I going to say? Um, where's four, where's super Mario four. This is super Mario five. He called it in Japan, in Japan, super Mario world is known as super Mario four. Oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. So that's why it's called Super Mario Brothers 5. Uh, I, for, that's I, I completely bold, forgot 3 existed. <laughs> that's a bold statement to call this game Super Mario Brothers 5. You know, I mean, we've gotten that with Sonic all the time. We have, but, you know, that's People one People always that's making Sega. their own Sonic 5s, you know? Or I Sonic guess, 4s yeah. before Sonic 4 actually happened. I guess, yeah. So... Um, yeah, I have no doubt that this is probably really good. There's a lot of great yeah. super worlds if you haven't played. But so this took seven years. That means he was making this originally on the first Mario Maker. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's, you know, not. Mm -hmm. So how does he copy and paste those over? He's got to have to do that brick by brick. That's going to be a. You probably did have issue. to do it brick by brick. Yeah. That's have crazy. Have his Wii U open and his <laughs> Switch open. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Uh, So good for him. I'm going to try it. I'm going to. Uh, See if Dan wants to do a speed run race. That'd be fun. I'll, I'll hit him up. He, we've been wanting to do a speed run race for something, so maybe we'll do it this for this perfect game. opportunity. Perfect opportunity. I'll try to hit him up, yeah. see if he wants to do that. Um. Anyway, so go check that out if you want to hop back into Mario Maker. Last of Us gets trailer. How, yeah, how we think of it. An official trailer for the Last of Us TV show that is coming uh, eventually. I forgot when. I think it's next year. Uh, it, yes. You know? Say what you will. It looks like The Last of Us. Oh, no. The show premieres in 2023. Yeah. All right. It, it does look like The Last of Us. It looks also like The Walking Dead show. <laughs> yes. I got a lot of Walking Dead vibes from this, especially like I think there was one part where they're like being held like a para, by a paramilitary group, which I don't remember from the game. The in the very beginning of the game, there's paramilitary stuff. And then yeah, after but the way ends, like... but... <laughs> I mean, they're not as organized as they are in The Walking Dead, is what I'm trying to get at. The paramilitary? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some oppressive paramilitary shit in the beginning of, of The yeah. Last of Us. Like when you see the town that you're walking through. And stuff. I guess, yeah. Um, so I, I, that's the vibes that I got. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll, I'll see it. I don't know how well this will translate, but uh, I mean, yeah. Pedro Pascal's great. Yeah, um, he's basically playing the Mandalorian again, protecting a little creature that he doesn't really want to protect and then grows to love. I think that The Last of Us has a phenomenal story, so they could do great things with it. Yeah. I have little faith because history has shown us that they can't. <laughs> they just yeah. can't. They just always fuck it up somehow. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll, I'm, just, we'll... I'm just trying to prep myself for having to explain this because I, I know my in-laws are going to watch this and they're going to have yes. so many questions. But I'm like, okay. Have you yeah. been watching Andor? I haven't. No, I have not. I'm behind on everything. I have not seen Andor yet. I still haven't seen Thor yet. Um, I haven't seen that either. So I'm all, like struggling to get through things. I'm up to date on She-Hulk somehow because those are short. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch Andor because I'm excited yeah. for that. I've, I loved Rogue One. Um, I've, heard, I've heard this is like very good, Andor. Yeah. So, so I'll watch that. Yeah. Um, all right, last news is uh, this bullshit. <laughs> hey, 
Ted Lasso is coming to FIFA 23, folks. Oh my not god! Just, wow. Not just the characters played by Jason Sudeikis, but the whole team of AFC Richmond, featuring popular players such as Jamie Tart, Danny Rojas, Sam Obasanya, Roy Kent, and Isaiah McDo- uh, Mikado. Um, look, Ted Lasso is a very good show, and it's fun that they're putting it into FIFA 23. This is making me tempted to play FIFA 23 only so I can play as these guys. And that's it. I have no other interest in this stupid game. So there's another show that's Ryan Reynolds and uh, Rob McKinley from Always Sunny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is it Rob? I get yeah. Name? Yeah, Rob yeah. McKinley. Uh, yeah. They buy a, uh, a, a soccer team. Yeah, but they they actually do it, and it's like a documentary. Yeah, no, it, it's a documentary. Yeah, did they steal it, that from this? Is they basically stole the idea from Ted Lasso and just did it in real life? I guess because like that documentary is very similar in style to Ted Lasso. Yeah, but Ted Lasso is a hundred percent the work of fiction. It's not like none yeah. of it is real. So my roommate uh, watched Ted Lasso, and then he started yeah. watching the documentary of, of Ryan Reynolds and Rob McKinley buying the soccer team. And he's like, "Yeah, this is this isn't funny." And he's like, "What? There's <laughs> nothing going on." And I was like, yeah. "I was like, it seems like a documentary." And then I like Googled it, and I was like, "No, they this is real. They did this in yeah. real life." So like that's why it, you don't think it's funny because you're trying to watch like a sitcom. <laughs> uh. Anyway. Uh, there you go. If you're into FIFA, that's it. Yeah, which I'm sure everybody watching this is into FIFA. That's all the news we got for this all week. Right. I hope so, you're happy so that with means, it. That means it's time for it's time for this thing. This is a little bit of a throwback. Uh, ten years ago, we sent this panel to print, and somehow it was published. This is David Aja. Uh, this is uh, uh, a panel from uh, Hawkeye. Yes, his Hawkeye run with Matt Fraction, uh, the definitive Hawkeye run. Such a good series. In this panel, Hawkeye is nude, jumping out of bed that is getting sh- riddled with bullets. And it yeah. says, scratch that, no good news, everything sucks. And it's just him in the nude, but his private bits is censored by a- his mask. <laughs> yes. Uh, that series is great. It has some of the yes. best art that I've ever experienced. So yes, uh, it it inspired the Disney Plus show uh, that we got, and, and it it shows it it's so good. That's what made that show one of my favorite Marvel things of the last few years. There you go, uh, David Aja, Matt Fraction, Hawkeye. Give, yeah, give it give it a shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, before we read the comments, let's read Luabic with 16 months. First podcast I've caught live in about a month or so. Do I need to play Samus Returns before finishing <laughs> this stream? No. No. You you do have to uh, drop a Prime sub, which you already did, which is fantastic. So you're already yeah. on your way. But you also have to play all of uh, all of the the the, or, the original a Suikoden games, which could take hundreds of hours. So we'll yes. see you. We'll see so you. So get next going. Time. Get started. Yeah. Uh, anyway, now we'll hear from you people. Yes. Starting off with anyone who left comments on last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel. Wolf Den podcast. I think I muted you by shaking you around on the screen. Uh, Dr. Turbo Sus. <laughs> <laughs> from last week says i'm not sure but i think the reason nintendo has multiplayer for goldeneye is because the multiplayer is coded into the emulator not the game the emulator tricks the rom into thinking inputs from multiple users online are coming from controllers locally so nintendo and xbox get the same rom but nintendo's emulator is what allows multiplayer you are correct and people were saying this in the chat however there's no reason why why uh why uh rare couldn't also do that yeah because that also doesn't explain why microsoft's versions have 16 by 9 aspect ratio native uh white uh 60 hertz uh stable refresh rate native uh dual analog controls native you know they they mess with the rom to make it more accommodating to a modern xbox audience so there's no reason to say that they couldn't also add online multiplayer to it 
especially when they made a fucking remake of it already with online multiplayer. Yeah, so the, my vision of the multiplayer was native multiplayer where it's uh, everybody yeah. gets a full screen, you know, like like that that's completely different than what the ROM would have been. And and I think Rare could have totally done that. But uh the reason yeah. why Nintendo has multiplayer is because it's just the ROM and 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 you can just access your friends uh, uh host. Like they host it but, and you just access it like you're playing Parsec. But again, ne- uh, Microsoft and Rare could have added online multiplayer to their version yeah. of GoldenEye. Yeah. This is definitely a case of Nintendo works some sort of deal yeah. where they can get that over yeah. at Microsoft. There's no reason why Microsoft couldn't have made their own native version like what we talked about where you get the whole yeah. screen. And there's no reason why they couldn't have done the whole remote thing where you remote into somebody else's thing was similar to Parsec or similar to how Nintendo Switch Online works. No reason for any yeah. of that. Anyway, Mohamed Abdel... Monem says, I'd argue there's a difference between someone saying, I heard they're making Grand Theft Auto 6 versus someone hacking the company, stealing their source <laughs> code and ransoming it. That's a good point. You're not wrong yes. there. Yes. Um, I'd argue it's more similar to like the Giga Leaks, but then yeah. that's shit that happens way later. So like, yeah, it's, it's less egregious because like the statute of limitations has passed. Like we don't, it's, it's not a big deal anymore. Yeah. They're clearly not making that shit anymore. Uh, D. Linton says Splatoon cleaning edition would be funny. Uh, that's just Power Wash Simulator. Yeah, it's Power Wash Simulator. Yeah. Somebody while I was playing Splatoon, somebody said this is the opposite of Power Wash Simulator. <laughs> uh, Double da- Double Dead Cat says I thought this was a furry podcast. Why? Because we're furry. You keep thinking that. <laughs> uh, uh, this one's definitely not because it's sponsored by Manscaped. Uh, yeah. Go Forth says Beyond Oasis is such a good action RPG, definitely in the style of top down Zelders, but reminds me even more so of Secret of Mana. Uh, the guy does walk wonky as hell, though. <laughs> he, guess, he walks I, wonky as hell because his sprite is so huge. And like a game like that, you know, you expect him to be like smaller, like a, like a Zelda or a Secret of Mana type thing. But he's like a full size guy. <laughs> he's a full sized guy. Yeah. I don't remember this. Oh yeah, I remember this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this was in the uh this is now on Nintendo Switch Online through the yes. N sixty no through the uh Sega Genesis games. Uh-huh. Um I I t- my parents have a switch light that just mm-hmm. sits there. Uh, and I put all of I added them to the family plan, and I put all of the retro games on there through the Nintendo Switch Online to try to, you know, plant a seed, Co- coax them into playing something. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll report we'll see back up if that works. Um, the Cosmic Skeleton says it's not just the music; it is mainly the fact that the Genesis version of Earthworm Jim has extra an extra level that isn't in the Super Nintendo version. That I did. I did not know that. I never heard. I never got very that. far in that game to know if there was a different level or not. Yeah, we were uh, never good at games. <laughs> I'm still not good. <laughs> I'm trying to get good at certain games. Yeah. It's not working out. No, I'm. I just play for leisure. I'm not into like, competing or anything like that. I'm trying to get good at speed running the original Mario because why not? I mean, I played it so yeah. many times. I mean, that's a game. Yeah, that's a game. Like I can see getting good at, but like for new stuff, just let me play my fucking game man yeah anyway joe breezy thank you for the prime subscription uh we're in the chat now so make it good uh does anyone know what's going on with the advanced wars games no will nintendo ever say something in regards to its release when uh russia gives up (laughs) yeah they're they're waiting for that to die down (laughs) yeah only game my mom played was fitness boxing 2 and tetris effect uh our mother only played uh like two minutes of ring fit no uh the ds game oh brain age brain age yeah yeah Yeah. will did you see the announcement of deadpool 3 yes i did did you see that i did yeah so yeah hugh jackman's coming back one more time that'll Mm -hmm. be fun not till like two years though so yeah so that'll be I weird. Was watching... like, are they going to replace Wolverine in the MCU before that? 
Yeah. Well, so I was watching something and this gave me like the clearest answer as to what's going on with the X-Men. Apparently all of the actors from like the last few X-Men movies, like dark Phoenix and apocalypse and stuff, they're all still under contract to play the X-Men in future movies. Mm-hmm. And those contracts don't expire until 2025. Okay. So we're not going to see a new X-Men announcement until 2025, let alone a movie. So I feel like this might just be their way of getting rid of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine once and for all and clearing the slate before they announce what they're actually going to do with the X-Men. The only ones uh, I could see them replacing Wolverine sooner because yeah. Hugh Jackman doesn't really give a shit. Um yeah. And wasn't Xavier in? Uh... He was in Doctor Strange, but there's two Xaviers. There's Patrick Stewart and James McAvoy. Right. Who was in it? Was it? I Patrick think McAvoy Stewart? is Patrick Stewart. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Uh. Anyway, we're still on the chat, reading from yes. you people for a brief moment. Yeah. Hmm. Uh. Will, have you been watching Sandman? Uh, no, I have not. I've heard it's actually good, so maybe I'll watch an episode and say it's good, and then call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard it was bad, and then I started seeing all this stuff saying it was good. So, and I'm surprised. Yeah, I, I thought that was at, at uh, first I thought glance, that was a Watchmen situation where it can't possibly be good. <laughs> well, at first glance, it does look kind of like cheap, but apparently, like if you keep watching it, like they hit all the beats of the comic book that they mm-hmm. are supposed to and it does a really good job of it Watchmen the TV show was a completely different beast because they went in a completely weird direction and it I heard that was good for it. Yeah, that, was that was excellent good. yeah that, I also Watchmen don't the hate the movie I didn't hate the, the movie yeah, the movie's fine the movie is not perfect the movie is severely flawed but the movie like does what it sits out to do and it doesn't and honestly does a better job of like what most people would have done with that as yeah, a straight I, adaptation. I think if you don't want to read the comics, uh, you should watch the motion comic that's available on YouTube. And if you don't want to do yeah. that, <laughs> then you should watch the movie and you'll, you'll be yeah. fine. But uh, I think uh, yeah, yeah, if, you, yeah. if that's the only way you can experience Watchmen, I think you'll be fine. Yeah. Uh, if, but that doesn't mean he should ever make a Superman movie again. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, finally going to start and get caught up on Andor tomorrow while we ride out the hurricane. Well, good luck. Yeah, uh, good luck. I'm also Hopefully gonna... the hurricane doesn't wreck the internet connection. Yeah, I, I'll start Andor later this week too, probably. Yeah. Um, I wish they'd make full-length animated Marvel movies for X-Men in the meantime. They're doing uh, that. They're, they're doing a... They're doing a continuation of the 90s yeah, not a movie though. It's a show, right? Yeah, it's a TV yeah. show. Yeah, but they're doing another season of the '90s. Yeah, which is awesome. That's fucking yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, I'd love to see Old Man Logan one last time, but we'll see if I'm in the mood to watch our stuff. Yeah, that movie was great. Yeah, a little too real in the beginning with the Xavier stuff. Didn't I? Didn't, oh yeah. <laughs> I oh yeah. That, that, that gave was, me that some trauma. <laughs> yeah. Um. Everyone should check out The Imperfects on Netflix. Somebody before, I think it was Mecha Dragon, said, uh, "Have you seen Cyberpunk anime?" No, I haven't watched that. I'm not I've really heard I've heard that's very good. And actually, I didn't put this in the key, but that drove people to go play the game, and right. it had a million concurrent players for the first time since it launched. That's great. Yeah. I saw some clips on Twitter, and it looked great. That's a show I wouldn't watch uh, in Japanese, though, because it's I'm yeah. pretty sure. It's a, it's a, it's. It, I'm pretty sure it's, it's either American or like Scandinavian. I don't think it's actually yeah. made by a Japanese studio, is it? I don't think so. I saw a TikTok where a guy was talking about watching it subbed or dubbed, and he said, "Not all Japanese voice acting is good," and I agree yeah. because I think, uh, what is it? Uh, Akira, I think Akira, the Japanese voice acting is is bad. <laughs> um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Uh, it's made by Trigger. Ooh, 
they're Japanese. The opening theme is France Ferdinand. I guess I should watch this now. <laughs> it came out on my birthday. There you go. Um, here you go. TV series. Creator yeah, Rafael Jockey. Studio Trigger. Wait, who is Studio? I thought they were Japanese. Trigger is from Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kill a Kill, Little Witch Academia, Brand New Animal. Yeah. I guess I gotta fucking watch it in Japanese now. <laughs> no, uh, you don't. Mecha Dragon says, that's the guy who made Take Me Out, Will. <laughs> Franz yeah, Ferdinand is the guy who made Take Me Out. <laughs> their, go listen to their third album tonight, Franz Ferdinand. It is their masterpiece serious question have any of you ever watched devil may cry the animated series if not you must watch it they just released the first season on hulu i it looks good i haven't yeah it. uh the old anime from like the early 2000s i've seen like a couple of episodes of that that is very good will looking crispy today hey, thanks it's that new uh camera mount that i bought i'll attribute it to you being in focus Yes. Your lighting being good, maybe the mount has something to do with that. I think because it moved it, it moved it closer to me. I used to have All, it like pretty far back. Also, no technical issues because I'm at the studio. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm streaming in a higher bit rate. So that might also have something to do with it. Uh, hey Bob, you got me uh, to look into buying a CRT, and I bought a fat twenty-seven inch, and I've been loving it. Do you plan on getting any more or videos on them? Uh, I won't be doing a video on them. Uh, I don't have plans to get another one. If I come across one, I wouldn't be opposed to it. You know, uh, I'm gonna be yeah. leaving the studio, so I would love a an actual full sized PVM, uh, for myself. But for now, I have the the uh, what are they called? The LDMs, the L yeah, whatever they're called, the the LCD ones that are like f fake PVMs. Uh, I have those, and I love those. Those are great, uh, and those will be part of my uh, setup when I make a new setup. Um, so I don't have any plans on getting anything new, but I do plan on getting a whole new TV setup. So. All of our retro consoles that we got sitting at our parents' house are gonna be in a they're gonna find a nice new home. <laughs> um anyway. Uh that's all I got. All I right. Gotta, I gotta go uh film a whole ass video. Uh thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolf. And if you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, a youtube.com slash wolf them podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you could do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm, anchor.fm slash wolf them podcast or your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get the show from folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate and review us. Because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, thanks for being here. I'll try to be live on Thursday night. Uh, I'm I got I've been slacking on streaming. I got to stream more. I'm trying to learn how to speed run Mario, the original Mario. So I want to get a lot of reps in on that. But also, I want to try to play this Super World. Um, I'm gonna try not to. I mean, I'm gonna stream some new stuff whenever it comes out. But I'm not gonna fucking try to ride the hype train if i'm not interested in it like splatoon's good but i'm just not it's just yeah i'm not not gonna force myself on it uh anyway will is gonna be on the nintendo podcast this week so just That's go right. to your little youtube machine <laughs> and type in nintendo podcast and then it'll come up and uh, that'll say did you mean the nintendo podcast and you just scroll past that and yes it should be there <laughs> uh will's there it's a great time uh yep. somebody in the chat says is wood gonna be correcting will in this time the answer is no will is still correcting the both of us <laughs> yeah um uh, anyway uh also somebody uh Lubick says wait you're leaving the studio yes i'm uh moving out of my apartment and this studio uh eventually not anytime soon but it will 
happen in like you'll you'll find out within within the next few months we'll yeah say. uh anyway thanks for being here uh, i guess i should pick somebody to raid you know how this uh website has a raid feature yeah for now for now we should uh yeah find somebody to raid who do we got here uh i think jackson was live no he says he's not live today oh we got da- oh is he playing he's dan's playing the super world God damn it. That I want fiend. A, I want <laughs> a speed run race. Shut up, Dan. Uh, well, anyway, go watch him play the new Super World. Uh, and then I'll see you on Thursday for God knows what, because I guess I'm not going to race him in that. <laughs> uh, and we'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.